having you on the show and we cannot wait for Trip the Switch. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how excited you are about being able to get out there and play at such a great festival. Uh, well, it's not that it's just a, such a great festival, uh, and it will be. Um, the fact is, I was just um, reminded before a couple of shows that we managed to do in March this year, all of the crew, and we work with the same team of people, but it's about 24 of us in the touring party. We've been working with them for 10 years at least, and none of them had worked in 344 days at all. So you can imagine now I'm getting texts from you know our crew in Melbourne saying, can't wait, can't wait. These guys will be so fired up um, to be able to actually do what they do so well. Um, and in the warmer weather too, which is just, <laughs> it's the coldest June day ever in Sydney today. Oh, wow. It, yeah, it's terrible down here as well. We've had strong winds, rain. Um, there's floods not far from where I am at the moment. It's absolutely terrible at the moment. Yeah, so yeah, we're really looking forward to getting up there and doing some work. That'll be great fun. Yeah, you mentioned before about the crew not being able to work for so many days. You've been in the industry for 40 years. Is this the worst thing that you've ever seen happen to the Australian music scene? Oh, yeah, without a, without a doubt. And in fact, look, I don't know how, uh, how our, our crew are actually surviving. And I'm sort of too scared to ask the question because a lot of them are renting and... Um, and they work a lot, you know, they're working on uh, international tours that come through. It's not just us that they're working for, obviously. Um, and none of that's been happening. And um, I know that uh, our tour manager, he's been working with us since 1986, and he by now is general manager of Australia's biggest um, uh, audio and lighting production company, JPJ Audio. And um, they virtually had to close down both of their factories in Sydney and Melbourne just because, you know, for a production company, there, there are no tours happening. Yeah, and a lot of people always talk about um, the actual artists, but there's also lighting crews, sound crews, roadies that have all been without work, and many of them haven't been able to, to get any financial assistance because they work in the arts sector. As, as an artist, how does that make you feel, knowing that so many of those people out there are suffering so badly at the moment? Well, the, the, it's the sort of overarching um, feeling that I had quite early on was just one of complete helplessness because, um, you know, I've got savings put away, but um, because they, they, all of the crew and the band, have the relationship with is that, that they are all subcontractors. So if I employed them directly, then they would have been eligible for JobKeeper and all that sort of stuff. And they weren't eligible, any of them, for anything. And this is, you know, I think... Um, it's a very big hole in the way that the whole planning um, went because um, every arts organisation has been kind of screaming at government to go, hey, over here, look at this big hole. Um, these people don't qualify for anything. And, um, you know, it's, crippl it's, it's crippling. It really, uh, as I say, I, I, I'm too scared to ask the question, um, you know, how are you, how are you surviving? Yeah. And how have you spent the lockdown? Have you been able to spend the time writing new music or how, how have you spent that time as well? With the, the writing thing I haven't done for a long time, but also it's something that I kind of schedule um, as a kind of uh, compartment and plan for. It's kind of strange way to do things. I know I'm not sort of a spontaneous songwriter and that's why I probably you know my output hasn't been anything like as large as it a Paul Kelly or a Neil Finn or something like that, who I think seemed to constantly write songs. Uh, but what I did do was I kind of went delving back into my archives and I discovered this massive box of cassettes. Um, and this, strangely enough, this, these were all my kind of working tapes from going right back to the beginning of Flowers, which is what we were called um, prior to being called Ice House. And so some of these tapes went back to 1977. And there were tapes of rehearsals and there were tapes of little things that I did on a, a little kind of home studio cassette player. Um, and there are a bunch of notebooks too. And we're actually using one of those as part of our stage um, show because by complete accident, I came across this notebook and it's got all of the beginning ideas of lyrics from the very first album um, and lots of things crossed out and lots of things that kind of don't line up with what 
yeah, they'll probably change when we went into the studio. Um, so it's kind of a really, it's a, it's a piece of gold really, this little notebook, and we're using projections of some of those lyrics from the songs that we're playing um, on the back of the stage, so you can actually see my handwritten kind of attempts, first attempts at writing the lyrics, I'm actually standing there singing. Um, so the, the archives were kind of interesting, and I found, you know, half-finished songs, and I found nearly-finished songs, and um, so transferring all these cassettes to a digital format to preserve really interesting exercise to see where things came from wow and i can't wait to see that projected up onto the stage as well and uh, that leads to my next question with so many great tracks that you have written over the years how do you pick a set list for a show like this um yes it's a, it's a good question look there are certain things we know we have to play um and then the rest of it's really down to a pool of stuff that um uh, we'd like to play, and strangely enough, there are things that work much better live than they ever did as recordings. Um, uh, and I suppose that's kind of understandable in a way. They've just got the right kind of vibe for, a, 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 you know, to play in front of a big audience and have people to dance to and all that sort of stuff, whereas it might, mightn't have translated. It was always difficult to capture that sort of energy on a recording anyway. Um, so there's a whole lot of factors at work when we pick a set. Uh, and we try and pace it so that it's got some dynamic as well. So, it, you know, it's not all flat out and it's not all slow, uh, but it's kind of got a shape to it as well. Yeah. You mentioned before that some of the tracks that you found during the lockdown were half-written tracks. Are you planning on doing something with those tracks now? You know, I had a discussion with my 24-year-old son, and he has played with us. He's a guitarist, and, um, and he was kind of sticking his head in the door every now and again when I was kind of unearthing these these gems from rehearsals right back to 1977 and I came across one which was almost finished it even had a vocal line with a few words and a lot of blanks of course um, but it was a sort of flat out uh, kind of song and he stuck his head in the door and said what's that and I told him and he said that could be from a punk band from 2021 I went Really? <laughs> so I said to him over dinner the other night, "Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop box you, box you that that sketch um, from 1977 and and see if, if you can finish it off for me." So <laughs> there's all kind of weird there's weird stuff going on in lockdown, you know. <laughs> definitely. Well, mate, we definitely can't wait to hear if you've got some new music coming out. You've been a perennial favourite on this show over the years. I know we did the top 100 Australian songs of all time last year and two Ice House songs got in there. So I know a lot of our, fa our listeners out there will definitely want to hear new tracks from you. Brilliant. That'd be, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious too, I must say, kind of going back over these things and uh, coming to grips with my t sort of 23-year-old brain. It's quite weird. Does it also take you on a bit of an emotional journey as well, going back and reading lyrics you wrote in your early 20s? Um, look, it, it, yeah, it did because it reminded me of just how kind of desperate I was. I, I, I know that seems like a strange word to use, but I was kind of grabbing ideas from anywhere I could possibly find them because I was so unfamiliar with the whole concept of writing songs. Um, and yet we were playing and we were very popular as a covers band and there was a whole lot of pressure all of a sudden when we got serious management for me to actually start producing original things and I didn't know what I was doing literally <laughs> I didn't have a clue and that's why there's sort of so much of this archival material because you know I was writing down in you know any any kind of lyrics I could think of in a, in a, in a little sketchbook and uh, there's even bits of you know kind of manuscript that I'd written out to remind myself of some melody that popped up and there's a whole lot of stuff and it's just me kind of desperately gathering together anything I could possibly use that might turn into a song. <laughs> Definitely. Well, mate, I know we are running out of time and you've been so great being able to chat to you today. So thank you so much for that. But is there anything you would like to say to our listeners out there before they head along to Trip the Switch? No, well, I, I think it's, a, it's an amazing lineup, and there are a lot of people here who I have incredible respect for. Um, James Rain, I've seen play with us a number of times over the last few years, and he is incredible. Um, the Angels I haven't seen for ages, but I'm a major, major fan. Shannon Knoll I've seen, and he's brilliant. Killing Heidi, I'm looking forward to seeing them because they've played with us a few times over the last few years, and I've missed them every time. 
I'm a very long-term fan of Boom Crash Opera and Dale is back as lead singer. So, um, yeah, I love love hearing those guys play. And Blues Arcadia as well. So it's, it's going to be a big day. Definitely. It's going to be an amazing day. Ivor, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Stay rugged up and we'll see you at Trip to Switch. Okay, excellent. Looking forward to it. All right, mate. Talk later. Bye. Bye.